بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ذا وقعة واقعة ليس لوقعتها كاذبة خافضة رافعة إذا رجت الأرض شيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا أبو القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على عداهم إلى قيام يوم الدين Welcome to lesson 5 where we talk about the close ones We talked about Surah Al-Waqa'a being one of the surahs that describe the hereafter Al-Waqa'a is a great event, the calamity, the occurrence, or you can say in a better way, the day of judgment. And the first you know, five verses talk a bit about the fact that this surah talks about the events of the day of judgment. And what will happen? Mountains will crumble. And these are all signs called Ashratul Sa'a means the signs of the Day of Judgment and it will be uh, as we have in tradition Israfil will come this mighty angel one of the most powerful of angels will come and blow on the trumpet and it will be the end of the existence of the world of everyone that is living and then he'll blow again on the trumpet and everyone will be alive and it will be the Day of Judgment Then we talked about As-Sabiqoon, as and we said that there's a relationship with Day of Judgment and its descriptions with human behavior. And that when you read the Qur'an, Qur'an is a book for us to cause us to remember the destination, where we, where we will go, where we will live forever. So after the You know, terrible events of the hereafter, Allah reminding us, teaching us. Then He divides uh, people into three categories. We have those of good fortune, those of ill fortune, and those that are the foremost, the foremost ones. We said that in the hadith, the foremost ones are, and some of the hadith talk about, being from, you know, different groups of people, from the slain son of Adam in this tradition you can see, which was Habil, or from the believer from Pharaoh's people, Mu'man al Fir'aun. So from Moses' nation there was a person, and from the nation of Isa alayhi salam was Habib and Najjar. These are all the fir- for- foremost people that helped their prophets in their message, and they are all killed in the way of Allah. And the foremost of Muhammad's nation, which is who? Ali ibn Abi Talib When we talked about as as the second as going back to the fact that they will be the first, in Tafsir al-Mizan mentions, they will be the first to receive God's mercy. Because when you do something and you are the first one there, for example, there are those that are the first one in this class. There are those whenever somebody needs to help or volunteer foremost. Well, they're also they are the foremost to receive Allah's mercy. So they're the first ones to go to heaven, right? So our life, you know, our endeavor in life is not only to be good from this classification of three, it is to be the foremost, to try and we can say race and compete with one another. Let me ask you this, in the communities that you live in, do you think most people are competing with knowledge and worship or still people are competing with the dunya and saying I have this job I have this car I have you know this house for example I went on this vacation are we competing this way or when believers the pious believers when they come together are we competing with one another and racing with one another when it comes to good deeds because that's what as one is that the first ones to do good deeds. And they're saying, look how much Qur'an I read. Look how much Qur'an I recite. Look how many books I read. Look how much, for example, and this is in a good way, of course, not to cause jealousy, but to cause this you know, good competition that look, I'm going to you know, this event, I'm going here. 
So therefore you see that we are actually competing each other in completion. But yet, unfortunately, throughout the world and throughout, you know, what we see is people are competing each other still on dunya. But we should be racing one another and see who is, you know, in the foremost, because life is a race for us. So what happens, the sabiqoon are who? So there's two ways to look at this verse. So when you look at this verse, the demonstrative pronoun, those refer to, can everyone say this? Ula'ika al-muqarrabun? Right, okay. When you look at ula'ika, you know, the demonstrative pronoun, you know, those, refers to the foremost. So those ula'ika, the first way to look at this verse, is those, and who are those? Is the verse before as So the sabiqun are ula'ika al muqarrabun mentioned in the previous verse. Those are the ones brought near, you know, in a nominal sentence and in a standalone sentence. Ula'ika al muqarrabun This is the first way to look at it. One sentence, and here you have the foremost are the closest. For example, they are the ones brought near to Allah. They're close to Allah. Others have said it is in the position of a subject and its predicate it is in the the you know garden of bliss. For example, ulaika al muqarrabun fi jannat al na'in. Others say it's speaking about the muqarrabun. Not we're sabagun are done. Asabagun asabagun. They say no. Ulaika al muqarrabun. Those that are brought near, then they fi jannat al na'in. They are in the heaven. So did you see catch the difference? Some say this, basically this muqarrabun refers to is a description, good description for asabaqun. They are the close ones. Or we could say no, the muqarrabun, those, those that are close, something separately, a separate topic, those that are close to God, they go to heaven. So let's see which one here makes more sense for Allah Ta'ala. Ta'ala. However, the first interpretation is the most a- appropriate for the context of the verses. So Allama likes to take this muqarrab, he not likes to, I mean for him from the context and the zahir, uh, you know, the zuhur of this, he says that as sabiqun the foremost, they are, they are those that are near. So meaning that when you are the first foremost, not only will you receive God's mercy, first, but you will be the close one to God. You have proximity to God. And that's the secret in a way. That's the way to do it. Do you want to be close to God? Is there anything better than taqarrub? What is insan's completion? It is the, you know connecting to God, being close to Him. We'll talk about later on, Allah talks about what does this closeness to God mean. But who attains it? The first those that do things because it's the hardest to be the leader. It's easier to be the, the follower. Or how you have in business school, you know, the second mover advantage, for example. <laughs> that those that move second, it's easier for them to just copy the first. But for you to be sabiqun, but Allah takes your position and gives you taqarrub because you deserve it, because you did something that was difficult. So this is, you know, a, a nice interpretation from Allah Taala Taala, and this is one of the secrets of life, because خيرٌ you know أفضل الأعمال أحمزها the best of action or the most difficult of action, and it is hardest to be the first. When the Prophet started salat, for example, two people followed, Imam Ali and Lady Khadija. That is much harder. Then coming out later on when the Prophet, for example, this, you know, conquers Mecca, and then you pray with him, for example. So to be that foremost, and nobody else is believing in Rasulullah, and you are his defense, and you, you know, circle around him and protect him all the time, and you follow his instructions, well, therefore, you're going to be, you know, muqarrabun. You will be the closest to Allah. It's a very, you know, beautiful way to encourage us, inshallah. So let's talk about qurb. Qurb means nearness. And it's used throughout the Qur'an. Allah actually does a very nice job of opening this. I looked at some another tafsir. They didn't really mention it as well as Allah did. They didn't maybe even mention it as much. 
But what is qurb? Because a lot of times when we say we're going to pray, we say qurbatan ila Allah. Has anyone heard this in Takbiratul Ihram? I'm going to do three units of maghrib prayer. Qurbatan, and people ask me, do you have to say this before you pray? You don't have to say that when you pray. It helps you, but you don't have to. Just We just say Allahu Akbar. But if you like to say three units of prayer for a closeness of Allah, because that's the intention. You know, that we have is to get closest to God. Is the intention we have is to obey God, and that obeying God brings us close. Just how the traditions say the best state that an abd can have, best state that a slave and servant can have, is in sujood, is in prostration. The closest state that a worshiper or a slave can have is when they're in prostration. So the concept of nearness and remoteness, these are complementary um, opposites. So we say, I'm close to you, I'm far from you. For example, right now, are we close to one another or are we far from one another? We're close to one. Don't say we're far from one Our hearts are close to one another. Don't ever say we're far from one another. Which are the first instance, you know, with qurb, applied to the bodies based on location. So the first way to look is location. We're people all over the U.S., all of us are in different places. We're far. That's the first way. Then you can say non-spatial meanings. For example, when it comes to time, you know, Wednesday is closer to Thursday, for example. Or when it says green is closer to black than white. So now you're getting closeness when it comes to non-spatial meanings. Or you know, we are closest for this reason. Nearness is used as a description of God to convey the sense that He encompasses all things. Sometimes God mentions in Quran that when my servants ask you about me, I am indeed near most. I am close to them. So Allah here mentions that this near nearness, closeness, means that I encompass all things. When they ask about me, I know, I hear you, I hear your dua, I hear, I see the problems that you have, I see your suffering, for example. I am all encompassing. And we are near to him than you are. Or we are near to him than his jugular vein. Don't worry, we are here. We're all encompassing. This idea that God is near to a thing than its own self is possibly one of the most astonishing conceptualations of nearness. That God is so close to me than my own self. That's maybe I haven't heard this anywhere else. That God is close to me than myself. Because anyone else, anything else can be closer to me? No, you think it's impossible. But God is so close, meaning He encompasses you. He knows about you. He is informed about you, for example, according to this. So nearness can also be applied to God's servants in the context of servanthood, ubudiyat, as an acquired trait, amr iktisabi, something that when someone worships God, worships God, and there's this Journey they have, journey, journey, they get closer, 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 until Rasulullah and Mi'raj is so close to God. When you take two bow, arrow bows, and you stretch them, that's about like two feet, three feet, depends on what type of bow it is, but two or three feet. That is the expression, when you take that two or three feet, how close Rasulullah was to God that it was two bows, maybe two, three feet, maybe six feet or something. Four or six feet, he was close to God. Of course, not physically. It's just so close, because we cannot imagine wajibul wujud, a being that has no need whatsoever, and does not have any physical, it's not in any need whatsoever. But the Quran beautifully says that Rasulullah became kana qawba qawsayn, o adna, o hu adna, or even closer than this, to Rasul, to that, to God. So that is the highest, you could say, in servitude, in ubudiyat. Because when we worship God, we get close to Him. And every time, time we worship God, we are getting close to Him. And every time that, God forbid, we sin, we disobey Him, we separate ourselves from our obligations, either social obligations, sometimes political obligations, sometimes you know, worshiping or spiritual obligations, we separate ourselves from God. So... The purpose of all these commands that God has, who is our Lord, is to bring us close to Him. And there is nothing else better for mankind than closest to God. This is our completion. 
So the Arabic word taqarrub, drawing near, is used to denote this. God's servants draw near to him through righteous deeds. And when the servants you know, draw near to God, this means that he reaches a place to be enveloped by divine mercy. You're being showered by his specific mercy because you are close to him, where the sources of misery and deprivation are removed from him. So we said that mercy means to give what you need. And when you're fulfilled, did you ever see you had like an, an, uh, you know, nice meal, you're filled, your needs are filled? Or you ever see before when you're hungry, you're a little agitated, you're filled, you get happy. So when that abd becomes close to God and he's happy, therefore at that time, I'm sorry, he becomes the most happiest of people because he is the most filled, fulfilled. At the same time, God draws Tagharub to his servants by admitting him to a station where he receives a special degree of divine grace, mercy, and forgiveness. So, therefore, we see this Tagharub. I'm going to go through some of these narrations that we have about Tagharub. So, we have in Al Kafi, Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Lama Usriya Bih, when he did Mi'raj, said, Ya Rabbi, ma hal al mu'min indaik. What is the position of your slave, of your believer for you, towards you? Ya Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, ma yataqarrabu ilayya abdun min ibadi bi shay'in ahabbu ilayya min mafturidat, min maftaradtu alay. There's nothing that will bring an abd closer to me than what is wajib. This is, you know, secret talk. In Mi'raj, when Rasulullah is just him, nobody else is there. And he's asking, you know, what is the position of the mu'min? And Allah mentions that, that the way that that mu'min gets closer to me and the best, most beloved is when he fulfills his obligations. وَإِنَّهُ لَيَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّافِلَةِ حَتَّ أُحِبُّهُ Or he does recommended prayers, and I love him. He does those prayers that he doesn't have to pray. Nafila is recommended prayers. He doesn't have to pray that time. It's not wajib, but he likes to. He likes to talk to God. Shows you that ghayatul ibadah brings a person that he becomes in a way he hears as a way what God hears. Or he sees in a way that God sees. Or he speaks in a way that God speaks. For example, yadahu alladhi yaptashu biha. Or his hands, he behaves godly in da'ani ahbabtuhu wa in sa'alani a'taytuhu and if he calls me I answer him and if he requests something I give it to him so his entire life becomes divine his entire wujud from abd becomes godly becomes divine so that potential of humans and this is one of the things that we see over and over in the lectures is that, and this is an al-kafi that a human when he starts worshipping, it seems like he's bringing himself down. But all he's doing really with his humbleness in worship, he's taking himself and getting godly powers. Godly powers. And so these are one of the, you can say these is for the infallibles, or these are for the prophets, or for the saints. That everything about them from hearing, from seeing, from different things about them, all becomes godly. Fi jannatin na'im. They're in the gardens of pleasure. And this is what happens to someone that is performed, you know, good action throughout their entire life. They will have an eternity of happiness, eternity of whatever they want. And even though their life was full of struggle, because to be sabiquna sabiquna was hard, it was difficult. But they spent fifty years, eighty years, a hundred years in hardship and work, but they gain, you know, jannah. They gain heaven. And whatever they want is in heaven, inshallah, for us. ثُلَّةٌ مِنَ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَقَلِيلٌ مِنَ الْآخِرِينَ Here, this has confused some people. These groups, you know, that we talk about مُقَرَّبُونَ or the best السابقون, they are a large company of them from the former people. And only a few, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنَ الْآخِرِينَ Only a few come later on. Who are these? Who are awwaleen and who are akhirin? Different interpretations have been given. Who are these people that from the, you know, the former people and the few? And why do the former people have more? 
And why do, you know, from the sabiqun, from the foremost, and why do the later have less? According to some scholars, thulla means a large group. So that large group, the former ones, you know, uh, refers to, you know, al awwali refers to past nations from earlier prophets, according to Allah wa ta'ala. So from other nations, from other prophets, there were more sabiqun, according to this verse. There were more foremost ones. And from the ummah of the Prophet, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنَ الْآخِرِ There's less, there's few, this way. So the later ones refer to the present nation. So there's two na other nations, for example, the nation of Ibrahim, the nation of Prophet Musa, Prophet Isa. There were more sabiqun. From our nation, there's less. This is based on how God has typically used these terms elsewhere, he says. For example, and our foremost two say, indeed, the former and later generations, so former and later gener generations, will be gathered from the tryst of a known day. So former and later generations. So that's one way to look at it, is by nations. Therefore, the meaning of these two verses is those brought near will be a large group from the past, Mugarrabun will be close from the from the past, will be more, and a few from this nation. Based on this, it is evident that the interpretation that says the meaning of the former ones and the later ones are the former ones of the Prophet's nation and the later ones is incorrect. Some say no. When you say Thullatum al Awaleen, this is saying the first, like during this time of the Prophet. Awaleen are those that experience a Prophet, a lot of them were good. And then Akhirin, which is us, we're farther from the Prophet. Many of us are wrong. Because Allah understands this from other verses of Quran, former and later generations, that this is speaking about different nations, not one nation, that the beginning of that nation and the, and the end part of that nation. Uh, Tafsir Naman the same thing. He agrees also that Thullatun min al awwalin basically is from other nations. And Qalil min al akhir is from others. But here in Tafsir Namuna, there's a question asked, and that is, why is this so when we always hear that, for example, in this slide, that the Prophet's nation, why would they be so few? So one thing he says is that, Qalil min al akhirin, maybe when you say a few, because he says one way to look at it is this way. At the start of the mission, Qalil, because we talked about Sabiqun. He says, when you relate this to Sabiqun, the foremost, he says, well, the, at the foremost, the beginning and the commencement of the mission, there are only a very few people. So, Qalilun min al akhirin is, for example, Imam Ali and Lady Khadija, for example. And they are only a few. They were only a few from the last akhir, means the, you know, the, the nation of the Prophet. Or maybe true, Qalilun min al those are really true, were few. Second of all, even if you say there are, there are few in number, Qalilun the sabiqun the best of the best, the Mughal from, from this Ummah, but he says that the quantity doesn't matter. We're talking about quality though. But when the, it doesn't mean that their quality is lower, their quality is higher. So because if you say that the best Ummah is the Prophet's Ummah, the quality of individuals is way better than the you know, quality of any other individuals from any other nation. But their numbers are few. Those really, really sincere ones, close ones, those really, really good ones are few. You know, but there were more from uh, the other. Uh, so this is something for us to think about, but this is how both, both tafsirs say. I want to talk to you a bit in this last few minutes about taqarrub and start and conclude with this tradition from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Uh, everyone knows here when you have a tradition from Qurar, it's from Imam Ali. Qurar al-Hikam is from related the traditions from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Aqrabu al-Ibad, the best, the closest slave to God is Allah Ta'ala. Aqwalahum lil how do you know? Another way, not only do they do sujood or they have sincerity, there's traditions like the muqarrab, the closest to God is the iman, for example, or different acts of worship, right? This tradition is showing that actually the closest, closest 
is those that say the truth. Aqwalahum lil haq. Those that say the truth the most. Everything they say is truth. Wa in kana alay, even if it's against them. That's the muqarra. They don't mess around. You know, they don't try to change everything. They don't lie. They're honest people, true people, powerful people that they don't are afraid of others. They say the truth. وَأَعْمَلَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ For example, and their actions are what is right. They do what is right. Sometimes, وَإِنْ كَانَ فِيهِ كُرْهُ Even if you don't want to do it, even if there's a disadvantage to it, even if there's harm in it, they put themselves in harm's way. They put themselves in something they don't like to do. But they still perform it.